Video games all have their own little hooks. If you don't have something unique, what's the point of playing? Some games have some crazy stuff in them that you just can't do anywhere else, and it's really impressive. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 mind-blowing things you can do in modern games. Starting off with number 10, it's juggling in Half-Life Alex. So Half-Life Alex is actually a very serious and good entry to the Half-Life series, but it's also a game built for screwing around in VR and kind of showing VR for what it is. A tool that goes beyond that of a typical video game controller or a mouse and keyboard and allowing a much more tactile, physical manipulation of the world around you. Like there is so much stuff you can pick up, manipulate, and oh yeah, immediately smash on the ground once you're done with it. Like in all seriousness, Half-Life Alex turns into the Lonely Island, threw it on the ground about 20 seconds after you pick anything up. And I love it. But with a little skill, almost anybody can juggle in Half-Life, Alex. Juggling, not quite like throwing stuff on the ground. Firstly, juggling is part of the system. It's functional. It's something that you're able to do within the context of the game's world. But some players have gone above and beyond that managed to pull off some really amazing stuff, like this video from Hebs who really shows off some genuinely skillful, shocking dexterity. Sure, juggling in Half-Life Alex is a little easier than in real life, but only by so much. You still need some serious coordination and speed to pull any of these tricks off. Man! And number nine is creating impressive works of art in Rust. One feature I really appreciate about Rust is that you can make your own custom signs and artwork using an in-game art tool. It's a little rudimentary, although functional. It's not like Painter or Photoshop, but obviously if the Rust devs were interested in making something that functional, I don't think they'd be making Rust. They'd be making Rust art or, or something, what you would call whatever this is, if it were much more advanced and standalone. Anyway, there's people who can create some really incredible, fantastic works of art in this game. One such creator is this guy named Movesy, who travels from server to server making artwork. The art in Rust is temporary by nature. Server resets mean everything you make is eventually lost forever. So seeing someone so talented and dedicated make art for strangers that doesn't last is impressive. And also maybe a little crazy, but uh, impressive. The artwork, as shown by Zinnikak on r slash play Rust, is that like our equivalent of the medieval style name? It is I, Zelinikak of Playrust, displayer of the art from roaming artist Movesy of Rust. I mean, I'm thankful that there are people out there like this documenting this kind of thing. It has just this unique style. It's all its own. It could only come from one source, and it's very likely that the tools that exist and their limitations it has a big influence on exactly what he's even trying to do. Movesy is super talented. Like, the art's good on its own, but when you find out it was made entirely in rust, that's amazing. And number eight is pulling off some seemingly impossible BMX stunts in Grand Theft Auto V. There's plenty of amazing things to do in GTA V, but my personal favorite type of stunt is with the BMX bike. You know, you know, you know. Keep in mind, it's not an extreme sports game, but there's some really funny, uh, legitimate tricks that you can pull off in this game. Uh, it's not Dave Mira BMX, the equivalent of Tony Hawk for BMX. It's Grand Theft Auto V. Uh, but the things that people have managed to do with this physics engine are unbelievable. One of my favorite compilations is by Dada 9 by 9 who manages to pull off some of the most impossible reality warping stuff imaginable. Sure, they start out normal enough, just grinding along in a game with no grind mechanics, but it goes way off the rails so quick. When he starts biking up the side of a building, it's temporary, but it happens. I'm always amazed when skilled players are able to take one game and turn it into something completely different. It's it's not something that's possible in any old game, but with GTA 5, you got more than enough tools for experimentation. At number seven, watching a play in Fallout 76. I know we rag on Fallout 76 a lot, and I'm gonna say it's deserved. Don't think I'm walking back on it just because there's something awesome in it. Uh, there's a hardcore player base in this game that is keeping it going and good for them. Like if they enjoy the thing, I'm happy for them. And some of the things they've managed to do are frankly amazing. Case in point, the Wasteland Theater Company, which is seriously an entire in-game performing troupe. Like, have you ever watched Station Eleven on HBO? It, it's that. 
but in Fallout 76, basically. It sounds like a cute little thing, but the amount of time and work they put into these performances, frankly, it's mind-blowing. The characters are all performed by a group of actors in front of an actual live audience. Uh, it's definitely scrappier than something like Marshmallow performing on Fortnite, but that's basically a pre-recorded video that Epic presses the play button on. These Fallout plays are actually performed live by people for real. It's just in Fallout 76. Like, looking at the credits, you can see the top of the actors, there was somebody in charge of lighting, stage management, set builders, there's tons that go into these things. And humorously, in the description of the video recorded by Jessica Starr, it thanks everybody on the server for not nuking the performance, which is a thing that's very possible to do, and excellent that the player base is respectful enough not to. At number six is performing a mind-blowing trick shot in Breath of the Wild. It seems like people just keep coming up with like new crazy things to do in Breath of the Wild. As we come up on its sequel with much more expanded possibilities, I think these players are gonna have a field day, but we've seen some pretty amazing stuff. There's definitely a lot of them, but this one remains one of the best. It's shown by Nico on their channel. They managed to kill a guardian from around 1400 meters away simply by aiming a shot in the air and watching it fall. Without some glitching, they'd never be able to actually see the arrow land because it's so far away, but they actually manage it. That the game even allows this to work at all is kind of mind-blowing. Most games just despawn the arrow if it's in the air that long. That's not all, though. Nico actually managed to top themselves last year with a staggering 3,500 meter shot from the top of Death Mountain all the way to Hyrule Castle, which is a staggering distance that puts most sniper rifles to shame. Weapons that use bullets, not arrows. Obviously, the game's physics for arrows aren't exactly realistic, but they're more consistent than most games out there. And this is the thing that proves that. At number five, playing a stealth game like you see in The Matrix. This one's a little more generalized, but there's playing a game well, and then there's this. Like, imagine the way YouTuber Stealth Gamer BR sees the world. It's gotta be like how Neo sees The Matrix, right? He's seen behind the veil and knows everything that a game is gonna do before any of it happens. How else can you explain the mind-blowing stuff he manages to do in games like Far Cry and Hitman? He's standing in place, throwing some random thing in the air, and like a minute later is bonking some guy in the head who wasn't even there before. The short videos posted on his channel would have only been possible to do after hundreds of hours of practice. At least, that would be the case if I was doing it. Maybe this guy's just really good at games, or is magic. I mean, he's probably not magic, but it doesn't really matter. The stuff he manages to pull off are equal parts mind-blowing and also hilarious, but there's just nobody out there doing it quite like this guy is. And number four, becoming an MMO pop star. If you thought Fallout 76 having a traveling theater troupe is wild, you haven't seen anything yet. Did you know there's an entire music subculture in Final Fantasy XIV? Yeah, the game's an MMO, where after you unlock the Bard class, you get access to various instruments with their own rudimentary sound system. Think the guitar from Last of Us Part II, but not quite as complicated. That doesn't stop players from doing some incredible stuff with the music system, though. So much that they had to create guidelines regarding what you can and cannot play in this game to avoid copyright issues. That's one impressive thing, but if you've played MMOs, it may not be that mind-blowing. Lord of the Rings Online also has robust music systems that some players actually went nuts with. But here's where it starts to blow my mind. On top of there being special music venues you can access, there's also entire music groups who perform in the game. One such group is called the Songbirds, who, yes, have a web page and everything. These shows aren't just some little amateur thing either. They go on for two and a half hours. Plus, there's intermission, where they're playing songs from various Square Enix properties. It's a whole production. It's pretty insane from the outside looking in. The band was formed back in 2018, but according to its website, they're still around and still performing concerts, which is a pretty good run for a real band, let alone a digital one. And number three, beating a four-player Destiny 2 raid by yourself. Again, this is a more player-driven one than the game itself, but the raids in Destiny 2 are meant to be an ultimate test of skill. They're a stiff challenge for even an experienced group of players, but someone, this dude named the Snazzy Rock, managed to beat a challenge that was previously thought to be impossible for less than four people. By all rights, it should be, too. The gatekeepers in the Vault of Glass are not meant to be fought solo. Like, there's, there's multiple things that make it impossible, with some glitches and exploits, though, along with some changes made to how weapons work in later patches, the raid is increasingly possible for people to pull off, but it takes a lot of patience. Like, it took Snazzy over 200 hours to pull it off, but he managed it, and he was the first ever solo kill of the gatekeepers, which, I mean, that's really impressive. 
At number two, beating one of the hardest games with your eyes closed. Beating any game blindfolded is an amazing achievement, but seriously, this one's incredible. Back in January 2022, during the awesome games done quick, Mitritz pulled off one of the most unbelievable gaming feats of all time. They managed to beat Sekiro blindfolded. Seriously, and also in two hours. I barely managed to beat the game on my eyes open, and it did not take two hours. It took a multiple of that. I'm not going to be specific, but it was a multiple. And that's, I mean, that's just insane for me to imagine. In something like Punch-Out, it kind of makes sense to me. That game has a fairly limited set of inputs. It's also not long, and you can pretty much memorize a fair amount of it. Sekiro, uh, much more complex. I mean... For one thing, you have to move. The parry probably lets you get away with a lot, but that doesn't make the game easy. Far from it. The current best Sekiro speedrun is sub-19 minutes, which is a lot shorter than two hours, but the 19-minute guy uh, didn't blindfold himself? I mean, I can't even fathom how much time and practice is required to pull this up. I don't even know what kind of brain stuff is going on. And they did it in front of a live crowd and everything. And finally, at number one, beating a game with your mind. Video games media, I'm calling you out here. Cool it with the guy beats Elden Ring with an even weirder controller articles. I get it. Bananas. Potatoes. Not tomatoes, though. Tomatoes, uh, I don't think anybody wants to deal with that mess. But with that said, this one is, I guess, categorically that kind of thing. But man, it's much cooler. Someone managed to complete Elden Ring with their mind. Uh, the person who pulled it off... Perry Cariel used a device called an electroencephalogram to map specific brain signals to different controller actions. Oh yeah, I said that word like I know how to say it. Also, same thing goes with their username. Holy crap. Both wild stabs in the dark. But the electroencephalogram, say that five times fast, uses brain signals, which she mapped to different controller actions. So pulling off a basic attack using her brain did take hours of effort, but eventually she managed to mostly be able to attack consistently. Now, it's not a perfect brain run. She had to use a controller for moving around, but hey, with some perfection, I'm sure she'll be able to play it completely hands-free, and then all of our brains will melt. Forget blowing my mind. This one melted it. When I first heard of this, like, uh, my, uh, it was a puddle on the floor of my brain. All these things really just grabbed my brain, held it up in my face, and editor insert threw it on the ground line here. Man! That's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first, of course, is a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications, and as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.